to buy or bust the game show where we take a look at three vehicles here at the dealer's auction we tell you whether we will buy or bust them and give you our guess as to what they're going to go across the auction block and today case what are we looking at we're looking at cheap classic four by fours and we have this yukon right here but let's start out on something different All right, Case, for our first vehicle, I have something here that I have always wanted to bring on the channel, and that is none other than the AMC Eagle. Yeah, and it's a really cool car, but maybe not the best example of it, because this is one that we have to leave running or we won't get to drive it. Yeah, so I apologize if you're hearing the uh, <laughs> engine or the exhaust ticking uh, over us talking here, and it's annoying for you guys, but this is what's necessary to bring this car to you guys, because <laughs> we were bound and determined to have this one in the buyer bust and i just think these are such a cool car i mean they're such a throwback to when things were a little bit interesting this is kind of like the first ever cuv a lot of people would say yeah i mean it's basically an off-road station wagon and who doesn't love that idea rectangular headlights so it's yeah it's pretty retro yeah it's pretty cool well, let's take a walk around it. So as Casey mentioned, it's got those square headlights and then this is the wagon form of it. Now this came in a lot of different variations. You could get the sedan, you could get it like this, the wagon, or believe it or not, there was even early on a convertible version of it that was converted by AMC. But this one is probably my favorite. And yes, I said we are doing off-roaders today and believe it or not, this thing has four wheel drive. Yes, this is a wagon that's kind of lifted up with four wheel drive and that is part of what makes this thing so cool. Hell yeah, it definitely does. And I feel like the wagon version of the Eagle had to be the most popular. I mean, I feel like this is the one that I've seen the most of. Well, this is the longest lasting. So they slowly started to kill off the variations of it, starting with that convertible and then the sedan died. And this was all that was kind of left at the end of the line of the AMC Eagle in 1988. Uh, this one is a little bit rough. You can see it's got some sort of like house made. Holy big God, old that steel is like bumper. a really hard steel bumper. It's got the rear taillights are pushed in. It's got some dents here. Uh, <laughs> doesn't run all that well. It's got no. some ticking coming from the exhaust manifold, but it's still an AMC Eagle, so it's still cool. Now the thing causing us issues today is uh, this 4.2 liter inline six. It makes about 110 horsepower when it's running properly. This one obviously is not for a whole host of reasons. So um, yeah, we won't spend too, too long thinking about that because it's not great. Well, let's check out the interior because that's where these cars really are special. So starting on the outside, I really do like that Eagle logo that's sitting out there. But once you hop in on the inside, this is why I like these so much. I mean, it is definitely a very early 80s, 70s looking vehicle. Look at this like canted, you know, dash here with the real, it looks like real wood, certainly. I mean, you can see the thickness of it. It kind of looks like real wood, right? And this dash is orange to match the outside of the car. I like that it's got a quartz clock there. And then over here you have your four wheel drive selector. Right now it's in two wheel drive, but if you push it, you pull it over and push it, that will engage your four wheel drive. And then these seats too, they're big, they're plushy, they're comfortable. They've actually held up really well over time. And they may not look like they have headrests, but if you just put your fingers here and push up, you get them to pop up. This was the first car like the first passenger car in the US that was built with four wheel drive. And I think that's just really interesting because, I mean, think about it this way, in 1980, when it first came out, uh, four wheel drive magazine basically said that this car was like the sign of a change when it came to passenger cars, because they thought that all wheel drive was here to stay and was going to take over. And if you think about it, they really were right. It's just everything kind of went to CUVs, which this really was the pioneer of the CUV. Yeah, I mean, four-wheel drive in a car, you know, not in a pickup truck or an SUV. Right. It's pretty cool. Um, it makes it unique. I gotta say, though, it's just, it's hard to get past the specifics of how bad <laughs> this particular one is running and driving. It's not healthy. Yeah, it's I not mean, healthy. This, this headliner is coming down. It's got dents and dings all over the place, but... <laughs> I'm having to left foot break it to keep it running because if I, if I have it in drive and, uh, 
and let it bog down, then it's it's gonna shut down. So I'm using my left foot on the brake to keep it running. But let's let's see what this 110 horsepower inline six feels like. Yeah, it's it's not fast at all. <laughs> no, and I I don't necessarily trust the brakes that much either. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean we got to what it called 25 miles per hour. That felt more like 15 maybe well, 20. Well, and here's a little piece of interesting <laughs> trivia for you. You know that there was a car company called Eagle and it actually got its name <laughs> from this vehicle because this was the last vehicle made by AMC and they were calling it, uh, you know, the Eagle uh, wagon at that time. And then it just eventually devolved into the brand called Eagle, which was also short lived. I do have to say, I love the fact that this is an American Motors Eagle and it has a plaque of an Eagle on the B pillar. I mean, and it's a four wheel drive station wagon that you can put knobbies on. It really doesn't get more American than that. And that, that goes a long way for me. If, uh, if this was a cleaner example, I would like it better. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's park it up and see whether we will uh, buy it or bust it. All right, Case, for the AMC Eagle, would you buy it or would you bust it? I'm gonna have to bust this one. I mean, if it were in better shape, it would be a buy because I do think these are really cool vehicles. And if you can find a good example of one, super badass car, uh, this is not a good example of one. So it's a bust, what about you? You know, I'm gonna say, if you can get it for the right price, I would buy this. Yeah? In fact- <laughs> Even in I, this shape? It, even in this shape, because anything can be fixed. Well, That's true. Just about anything Most can be things. fixed. <laughs> yeah, it just depends on how, how deep you wanna go as far as the money aspect goes. But for this particular example, rolling across the auction block, I'm gonna venture to say that this is gonna fetch maybe a thousand bucks, and I may even be being generous here. What yeah, do you think? I was gonna say maybe 800. Um, I don't, I, I don't expect a lot to come out of this with the way it's running. And we had to, we had to get four jump packs in there before <laughs> there was one with enough juice to get it fired up. Well, um, I have to say though, so yeah. <laughs> if this does go for less than a thousand dollars, I might buy it. As rough as it is, and as smoky as it is might be fun to kind of get one of these off-road and well, it's obviously one I wouldn't care about beating up. If you do, we'll have to test it against your Baja Bug and your Mini. There we go. All right, guys, let's toss to it and see the results. All right, so first across the auction block was that AMC Eagle. And what were our guesses, Case? Yeah, so to recap, you guessed $1,000. And I guessed $800 because, yeah, the AMC was not my favorite. Yeah, and uh, to be honest, the uh, headliner was sagging so much, I found a bunch of orange felt on my hat after I left. <laughs> I so I thought you. that was kind of interesting. But it opened as an asking price of $3,000, and it trickled all the way down to 400 bucks before somebody finally raised their hand. And then there were a slurry of action bidding it all the way back up to final selling price of $1,800. $1,800 someone yep. paid for that? $1,800 plus auction fees, so a little over two grand. Either way, I'll take the win on that one. You were the closest. We were base, both way below, but yeah, that's crazy. Yep. All right, Case, for our next vehicle, what are we looking at? This is my personal favorite that we're looking at today. It's this Datsun 720 pickup. Let me tell you why this is my favorite thing we're looking at today. First off, it's a small pickup truck. It's four wheel drive and it's manual. These are all great things to have here in Colorado. Yeah, I think that's pretty rad. And then this also came in two different cab configurations. You can get the regular cab or this guy, the king cab. And don't you feel like a king? I don't know if I would feel like a king sitting in that back seat. Of course, we also got to check out the interior because this is the king cab. And you can see we've got this big long throw shifter. Very old school, very agricultural. I love that. We've got this square set of gauges, but Otherwise, it's a pretty small, simple interior. One of the really interesting things about these old Datsuns is that there was actually an aftermarket company, a third-party company that did conversions on these to turn them into a Forerunner-like covered utility vehicle. So those were pretty cool, especially because they were called the Bushmaster, right, Brendan? Yeah, I think that's a really fun name, honestly. I would, uh, I would honestly want to seek one of those out just to say that I own the Datsun Bushmaster. Bushmaster. So under the hood of this guy is their 2.2 liter inline four-cylinder engine. Now these were 
Well, they weren't really very powerful. They were putting out about 98 horsepower, but you have to keep in mind, this is the early 80s because this is a 1981, and really all engines back then were pretty anemic, but this one in particular is gonna be pretty anemic. I would imagine here, in Colorado, driving this up into the mountains would be quite a challenge. Yeah, and I mean, luckily it's a pretty small pickup, so it's not like it's got that much weight to pull around as long as you're not hooked up to a trailer or anything, which especially, yeah, here at altitude, I would not want to be hooking this up to a big trailer, but... Well, Case, let, let's get this thing out and drive it and see what it drives like. You know what I love about this truck is how small it is. It's so narrow. You, you just don't get that with anything modern. That's true, and you know, this thing is like the perfect off-roader because it's low miles, it runs really well, so it's not gonna leave you stranded out on a trail, right? Yeah. But the outside's a little bit on the rough side, so <laughs> if you get some dents or some scratches, like, who cares? Yeah, you're just <laughs> not gonna care whatsoever. Another cool thing about this truck is this is actually the predecessor to the Nissan D21 Hardbody, which is an absolutely legendary truck. So it's great to see where that all kind of came from. Yeah, I'm a big fan of those D21 hard bodies. I can definitely see the evolution, but I've got it lined up here on the test track. Let's see what 98 horsepower at a mile above sea level does. Oh yeah. I've got it floored, that's everything. <laughs> oh I mean, man. It keeps uh, pulling. Yeah, I mean, it's that was about <laughs> 25 miles an hour, which may be one of the slowest cars I've had on this test track, but... Uh, it's not the slowest car we've driven on on the Classics channel, that's for sure. Yes, that's true. Well, let's park this thing up and see whether we'll buy it or bust it. Now, it was really loud in the parking lot when we were buying or busting this Datsun, but let's let's talk about it. Would this be a buy or a bust for you? Yeah, so the Datsun is definitely a buy for me. Um, those are just such cool old trucks. I mean, you get the reliability, you get the versatility, and you just don't find trucks like that feel that utilitarian anymore. Yeah, and I feel the same way. It's a really cool small truck, something that's durable, fun to drive, and it would be a really fun vehicle to have in your fleet. But the numbers that we shook on were 1,500 for me and 2,500 for you. Those were our guesses before it went across. So what did it end up being? So the Datsun opened at $2,000. Okay. But there were people that were very timid at this auction I found. It had to go all the way down to 700 bucks before it finally got a bid. And to be honest, I thought that was so cheap. I raised my hand. Yeah? Yeah. So when it, it the $800 <laughs> bid was mine, the $1,000 bid was mine, and then once it went over that, I backed away. I was like, if I can get this thing for a thousand bucks, I'm going to buy it. Oh yeah. Uh, but it ended up selling for 1500 bucks, which oh. is literally right on the nose for your guests. So you take a win on that one. On the money. So right now we're tied. Yeah, we are. Let's see what the uh, third one goes for. And last but not least, we are looking at, and I may make a bold statement here, what I think is the greatest vehicle platform ever made the GMT 800. Well, it's definitely the smartest choice of everything that we're talking about today because these GMT 800 and even going back to GMT 400 trucks and SUVs are fantastic. They are bulletproof and you know that well because you have one of these. Yeah, mine looks almost like a spitting image of this except mine is the heavy duty. This is the standard 1500 series. But let's talk about this guy. So this one is none other than the GMC Yukon, but it is not just regular Yukon, it is the XL, which means it gets the longer wheelbase and more storage space in the back. And this is probably my favorite body style of the whole series, because yes, you could get trucks, you could get Tahoes, you could get Escalades, but the GMC is the most luxurious version of the one that's got the extended wheelbase. And here's the, the kicker. The extended wheelbases provide more space and are generally cheaper. So not only do you get all of this storage space in the back, which with all the seats folded down, look at that, you could fit four by eight sheet of plywood back here and use this really as a truck, which I do with mine. Now there's a ton of different engine options that you could get in these vehicles. You had a 5.3 liter V8, but you could also get a six liter V8 or if you're like Brendan and you're really cool, you got the 8.1, which is a big badass motor. And there's even a lot of people these days that are doing diesel swaps in these from the heavy duty trucks 
the Duramax, and they're calling them Duraburbs, which is a really cool swap, don't you think, Brandon? Yeah, I think that is really cool, but the vast majority of them you're gonna find have this 5.3, and a lot of people have heard the term LS swap it, right? Well, the LS generally comes out of one of these because these engines are so bulletproof and yeah. durable, they're plentiful, parts are cheap, they're generally super reliable, and you can get gobs of power out of them. Absolutely. All right, so hopping into the interior of the GMC Yukon, these things are like a lounge. These seats are huge and they're plushy and they're comfy. And yes, the leather on them does tend to rip and tear, but they're just as easy to get covers for and to get them reupholstered is not that expensive. But this is your typical 90s or late early 2000s GM interiors where you have big chunky buttons. This is an aftermarket radio and a lot of hard, not so great plastics. But here's the thing is they generally hold up fairly well. I mean, even with these play school style buttons, you can see that this thing it still has all the dials. They still seem to work and function as they should. It's just a very utilitarian interior. And to be quite honest, I, I love it. All right, Case, I know you've ridden in my Yukon before, but I want to know what you think of this one. Now, the difference is the heavy duty, obviously you get the bigger motor, yeah. but you do get some beefed up axles that kind of cause it to ride a bit more truck-like versus these. So if you want something that's more of like a daily driver rather than a utility type of vehicle, I would actually say you might want to go with one of these because the ride is very smooth and very supple over bumps. It is. It's a really comfortable vehicle to drive, not only because of the chassis and everything, but because of the way that the seats are in this. Uh, and yeah, I, I got to say that I do like the 2500 a lot. I, I think that they're super badass. The fact that you can get that big 8.1 liter V8 and you can get those beefier axles but not only do they ride a bit stiffer, they're also a lot more expensive. Oh yeah, well they're a lot more expensive and they're a lot more expensive to keep gas in. <laughs> As I mean, you know well. Yeah, mine, I, I don't daily drive it simply for the fact that it gets regularly between 11 and 13 miles to the gallon, whereas something like this- Will be better, it's not gonna be fantastic. Yeah, you're probably gonna get at least five miles per gallon better in this, if not even more. Now let's see what it does. It's. Hey, it's got a motor in it. Of the three vehicles we've driven today, this is oh, definitely the peppiest. Easily, <laughs> easily the quickest. Uh, and yeah, I mean, this is just, um, it's, it's a cool vehicle for all its utility. I think if you want something that's maybe a little bit more classic and interesting, the GMT 400 is a good way to go. This is going to be more modern, more comfortable, more refined. But those older GMT 400s are nice in that. They're a little bit more retro, maybe more interesting to look at. Yeah, I, I like the boxy styling of those 400s. I do find these to be a bit more comfortable. And I've, in fact, I think this is kind of like peak GM interior comfort because the generation after this, they, the seats just started to get harder and harder and harder. Um, so this is really the best generation in my opinion. It may not be the best looking generation, but the, the fact of the matter is you can get these so cheap, they're a dime a dozen, they're everywhere, and they're everywhere because these things just last forever. But let's park it up, and I wanna know whether you would buy or bust it. All right, Case, obviously I've made my answer very clear as to whether I would buy it or bust it. Of course, I would buy this all day long. What about you? I would say I would probably also buy it if I didn't have my truck especially and I wanted something more utilitarian. Like you said, there's just so many things you can do with these. You can pull a trailer, you can do some light off-roading, you can carry a bunch of stuff, a bunch of people in it, you can make one of these into a camper. So yeah, it's just a smart vehicle to own. Absolutely, well, I'm curious to know, now this one, the odometer's not working, so they have it displayed as one mile. So the mileage on this- Unknown. It's unknown, but what do you think it's gonna go for across the option block? You know, I have a feeling that this could go for as much as three. Yeah? Yeah. I think with the odometer not working, you, you might be pretty close, but I'm gonna go a little bit less. I think it's gonna go for closer to $2,000. Okay. But let's toss to it and see who's right. 
All right, so last up was that GMC Yukon and Case. What were our guesses? So our guesses were $3,000. That was my guess. And you guessed $2,000. So what did it end up being? So the opening asking price was $2,000. So me and the seller were in tune here, but it did have to go down to a thousand bucks before getting a bid. And then it only got one additional bid selling really? for 1100 bucks. And I think that is a heck of a deal. Yeah, that's a for that vehicle, deal. For Cause sure. it was in pretty good shape. Yeah, it was, but either way, I'm a little bit closer. We were both a little bit high, but I'm a little less high on it. So I guess overall, I will take the win for this episode. But hey, you hit one literally right on the nose, apparently. <laughs> you know the market exactly for those Datsun 720 trucks. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take that for uh, my first round at this game show, Buyer Bust. And really cool to see what these actually went for. A couple surprises in there. Absolutely, yeah. I know it's fun to have you out there, and I'm curious to know what you guys think of this episode of Buy or Bust. Leave it in the comment section below, and maybe if you had some guesses, throw them in there in the comment section below, and don't cheat, because we can see if you're cheating.